So we'll be speaking now about the Kaddish. The Kaddish is probably one of the best known prayers in the Jewish liturgy, but probably one of the least understood. It's actually very difficult to place Kaddish under a microscope because there are actually various kinds of Kaddish that are recited at different times. We have, for example, the Kaddish de Rabbanon, the Rabbi's Kaddish, which is said after a study of one of the Agadic or homiletic portions, passages in the writings of the sages. Then there's something called Kaddish Shalem, which is a full Kaddish, which is said by the leader of public prayer services at the end of each of the major sections in the prayer service. Then there's something called Chatzi Kaddish, which is a half Kaddish, which again is said by the prayer leader during formal prayer services between the various parts of the prayers. Then there's what is referred to as the Kaddish Yasom, which is the mourner's Kaddish, which is recited by mourners at the end of the prayer service and at the end of different psalms that are recited. And finally, there's an expanded form of Kaddish which is said at a cemetery after a funeral. And as well, there's an expanded form of Kaddish that's said after the completion of the tractate of a tractate of the Talmud. What I want to focus on tonight is the better known of these forms of Kaddish, which is the mourner's Kaddish. So before we actually explore the meaning of the text, let's just read the text. The mourner's Kaddish. May his great name grow exalted and sanctified in the world that he created as he willed. May he give reign to his kingship in your lifetimes and in your days, and in the lifetimes of the entire family of Israel swiftly and soon, and now respond, Amen. And the congregation responds by saying, Amen, may his great name be blessed forever and ever. And then the reciter continues, May his great name be blessed forever and ever, blessed, praised, glorified, exalted, extolled, mighty, upraised, and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he. Beyond any blessing and song, praise and consolation that are uttered in the world now and respond, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all of Israel. Now respond, Amen. May he who makes peace in his heights, may he make peace upon us and upon all of Israel, and now respond, Amen. What is going on in the mourner's Kaddish? First of all, Kaddish is always recited in a quorum, in a minion of at least 10 male worshipers. And what happens when the mourner comes to recite Kaddish in a quorum, it places them within the community of worshipers, out of the dark isolation of mourning. Mourning is a very difficult period to be in. We often feel very alone. And so the very process of having to leave our isolation and come to be among a group of other Jewish people in a supportive environment, to say Kaddish is very healing. There's great comfort in being part of the community. Number two, Kaddish brings us into the presence of God because death can alienate us from God. Death can feel very unfair. And so despite our loss, in the Kaddish we affirm our faith in God and we come to peace with God. Number three, Kaddish connects us to the person who died. In the words of Rabbi Maurice Lamb, Kaddish is a hand clasp between generations. There's tremendous consolation to the deceased themselves, to know that their children are continuing their legacy. Number four, 
Kaddish is a consolation to God. Because God's image is diminished by the loss of any being that's created in his image. So when God's image is decreased, the Kaddish says we magnify God, we exalt God. The Kaddish is a consolation to God. And finally, Kaddish changes and elevates the person that is reciting it. Because the mourner should reflect on whether they are fully revealing the divine soul that's within them. So Kaddish exalts God, but Kaddish also exalts each being created in his image. And finally, Kaddish lifts, lifts up the soul of the deceased. We bring merit to the deceased by demonstrating that their impact on us has led us to publicly sanctify the name of God. By our saying Kaddish, we demonstrate that the deceased was a catalyst for our lifting up the name of God. And so that brings healing and merit and elevation to the souls of those who have passed away. Kaddish is the actualization and the articulation of the entire purpose of our existence and the purpose of the nation of Israel. After all, what is the purpose of human existence? So the Torah says that God created human beings in order to have a relationship with him. God is seeking a relationship with every human being in the world. The goal of history, according to Judaism, and this comes through very clearly on our prayers said on Rosh Hashanah, but it's said in the Kaddish itself. The goal of history is that every human being comes to know God. And that's why God chose Israel as his chosen people, to be his ambassadors to the world. God says to Abraham, in your seed, all the nations of the world shall be blessed. Before we receive the Torah at Mount Sinai, God says to us that we are to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Priests are teachers, and Israel is here to teach the world. The prophet Isaiah says that we are to be a light to the nations. Isaiah says that we are to be God's witnesses. The people of Israel are called upon by God to witness to his reality in the world. And so in the Kaddish, when we proclaim the greatness of God, the Kaddish is a public sanctification of his name, and it's a prayer that soon all of God's desire for a world that will know him will soon be realized. That is the greatness of Kaddish.